Now I want to bring in Adam Bowler, who is one of the only Americans to ever negotiate with the Taliban. Now he served in the Trump administration as the CEO of the U.S. International Development Finance Corporation. And the U.S. military, of course, and allies have been evacuating people over the last few days. Good to have you on the program with us, Adam. Thanks for having me. So you negotiated with the Taliban. Just give us the background. How long did those talks go on? What was the aim from the outset? I met with the senior leadership of the Taliban twice alongside Zal of Ambassador Khalilzad. And my role in discussion, I ran the International Development Finance Corporation, which is kind of the U.S. development fund. We have a $60 billion fund. And the main discussion with the Taliban was in a context of a peaceful transition and a transitional government, some of the upside associated from an economic perspective. Um, you know, as you know, Afghanistan has a lot of natural resources. There's a lot of great things that you could accomplish. And the main point to them was, this is what peace could look like uh, economically as well as diplomatically. So right now, it's pretty incredible to hear that the uh, CIA director has been meeting with the Taliban to negotiate uh, what's going on right now with the evacuations. Uh, what do you make of those talks now that we're learning about them? I mean, I think that they're important talks to have. I mean, I, I'm a big believer in having discussions. I think the important thing, and this is my lesson from dealing with the Taliban, on one side, they can be a disciplined militia. On the other side, they're a regional militia. Um, and so what's important in this is strength and unity. Uh, if the Taliban understand um, that there are repercussions uh, and there's accountability, then the Taliban will respond. They've shown they can respond uh, themselves before. But if we're not united as allies um, and we're not giving a unified me me message and there's no strength behind that message, then a regional mil militia is not going to respond to that. So what did you achieve with your negotiations with the Taliban and what can be achieved right now? So I think the discussion with the Taliban was, as I said, what the upside looked like. And the Taliban understood that. I mean, I, I was hearing uh, er, just earlier on the report, people are motivated economically. That's what it always comes down to is economic incentives. Um, and so speaking in terms of economic incentives is fine as long as you also have the heft and military power behind you. So. My suggestion going forward is, number one, it's really important that the United States and our allies present a unified front. Uh, because you have other autocratic nations, and I'm talking about China and Russia here, that have their own interests here. Uh, and so for us to be united and act together is an important thing. Number two, the Taliban needs to understand that if we don't end up in a positive situation, there will be repercussions. Um, and, and, you know, full repercussions there, not only economically, for, but from a military perspective. So I think, number one, it's unifying together and then providing a strong front that is not only economic or diplomatic, but it's military and intelligence as well. So right now, the U.S. has just one week to leave. The Taliban want the U.S. gone. What leverage does the U.S. have right now in terms of uh, negotiations? I think the President of the United States is considering whether it's a date that matters or whether it's a mission that matters. Uh, my recommendation would be it's the mission that matters. Uh, United States ethos is that we take care of American citizens, we take care of our allies. Um, and so from my perspective, the mission ends when our allies and our citizens are safe. And so what happens once that deadline is reached? Uh, should there still be people left behind and, and given the numbers that are still there, it's, it's very likely that there will be people left behind. How do you see this playing out? I think that the deadline is an artificial deadline. Again, I would set that uh, based on the mission. So uh, if we're not, if we have not accomplished the mission by that deadline, we set that deadline, we can change that deadline. The Taliban also have set that deadline. They, they want the U.S. out by that date. How do you think they will respond, given the fact that you've spoken with them in the past? What are they likely to do once that, that deadline is reached? Uh, I don't, I mean, at the end of the day, the United States uh, and our allies need to speak for ourselves and what we need to accomplish. And so I think the Taliban understand our goals. Uh, if they want us to reach that specific deadline, then it's going to be really important that we accomplish the mission. But I would be very clear to the Taliban what the mission is, uh, and that is to get our people out safely and our allies out safely. And until that has occurred, we don't turn our backs. And the Taliban are going to have to understand that. Uh, we, we don't make policy on the basis of what the Taliban say. I think we can fairly communicate where we are. Uh, but if I were uh, in the, the administration shoes right now, 
I would accomplish the mission at all costs. All right, Adam Bowler, good to get your perspective. Appreciate your time today. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me. Well, we are, of course, awaiting U.S. President Biden to discuss the decision to withdraw all troops from Afghanistan by a, a week's time, by August 31st. We're going to take that press conference live when it happens later this hour. We're well, still to come. They made it out of Kabul, but what's next for the thousands of refugees fleeing the Taliban? An expert on resettlement will join me live later this hour. Plus, he was known as the reluctant rocker. Rolling Stones drummer Charlie Watts has died at the age of 80. We're going to take a look at his life and legacy when we come back.